Welcome to today's lesson. So today we're going to be looking at glaciation. To start off, let's just see what your current understanding is. What do you think the correct definition is for a glacier? Is it A, a slowly moving mass or river of ice? Or is it B, a large floating mass of ice? I'm going to give you a few seconds to think about your answer. The answer is A. A glacier is a slowly moving mass or river of ice. B is an iceberg. The definition of a glacier is a large mass of ice that moves slowly over land, especially down the side of a mountain, often moving rocks with it to create distinctive landforms. Now that begs the question, what's the difference between a landform and a landscape? Simply put, a landform is the individual features of a landscape. So here we can see individual landforms being arranged to produce a nice landscape. The landforms are the individual features of a landscape, and together the landforms create a landscape. Think of the difference between a puzzle piece and a completed puzzle. The individual puzzle piece would be a landform, whereas the completed puzzle would be your landscape. Now let's check out some fast examples. Is it a landform or a landscape? And the way we're going to do this is by playing the game Fortnite. Now the rule of thumb is, if it looks like it would make a nice wallpaper and you can name more than one feature, it's probably a landscape. So here you have a palm tree, that's a landform. Add a few more, put a little island, have a little hill, your landscape. This is an example of a human landscape. This is a valley, so it is a land form. This is a really nice one, so you've got a lovely autumn landscape. So it's made out of individual land forms, all placed together. There's a creek, there's some boulders. That is a landscape. Now that that's out of the way, if glaciers are a mass of ice that moves over land, picking up rocks and creating new landforms, well, we need to understand the three processes that transform the Earth. The Earth's features are constantly being shaped by three agents, water, wind and ice, for a combination of three processes, erosion, transportation and deposition. We can visualize these three processes with a nice analogy with snow. Suppose, for instance, that there was a lot of snow on the sidewalk. Your task is to take the snow and move it to a new pile out of the way. So your first thing is to break it into a small piece. That's erosion. Anytime you break a large section into a smaller section, that's erosion. So in this example, we can see how a scoop from a shovel would be erosion. You break into a smaller piece. Transportation is you moving that piece to a new location. If you're going to take it from the sidewalk and put it in the wheelbarrow, that's transportation. You're moving it from one point to another. Deposition is simply, where do these pieces land? You've taken a small piece, you're moving it. Where, does it, where are you dumping those pieces? So once you lose that velocity of the transportation and you stop, it falls, that's deposition. Now, let's start looking at glaciers, starting from the very beginning. So glaciers start in what's known as a corrie. Corrie are the dips found in mountains. What will occur is that it will start to snow. And as it begins to snow, it will start to collect in these corries. And at first, it's going to be light and fluffy, as snow is when it first lands. But once that layer after layer starts to pack, it becomes much, much more heavier, it becomes more dense, and creates densely packed ice. Now, the ice at the bottom, or the sole of the glacier, melts under the intense pressure. So here we can see how the base is starting to melt. Now, this leads to what's called rotational slip. Think of how it's possible to slip in a chair while you're sitting on it. If it's slippery on the bottom, it's liable to pivot out and slip, so they call it the rotational slip. But, by itself, rotational slip will have little impact on creating unique landforms. Because, after all, the rock is much stronger than the ice, 
So as it slips, nothing really going to change. So that's why we need freeze thaw weathering and something called scree. Now to understand freeze thaw weathering, first we need to recognize that sometimes there are cracks that are found in the tops of cliffs. So here we can see the cracks at the top. Now what will occur is, as it begins to rain, these cracks will fill with water. And at this point, it's ordinary, there's nothing to worry about. But, as the temperature changes and we enter winter, that water goes from cool to cold to freezing. So the question is, what happens when water freezes? Well, it expands. And that creates a lot of problems. That's also the problem in cryogenic freezing. If the human body is largely made up of water, and you freeze somebody, well, all the water in the human body is going to expand. In a domestic setting, you can see how this expanding when frozen feature can be used when you have shoes that are a bit tight. What you can do is you put a bag inside the shoe, fill it with water, and then put the shoe in the freezer. As the water freezes, it expands and it loosens the shoe. For our circumstances, we're going to use it in this crack found in the cliff. As the water starts to cool and go into freezing, what we'll find is that it will start to wedge. Now notice how as it freezes and expands, it wedges the minor crack into a slightly bigger one. But we call it freeze-thaw weathering. So it goes from freezing back to cool. But then again, it starts to freeze again. So again, we've got another wedge. It starts to expand even further. And then from there, as it begins to cool, you'll find that there's very little holding that piece up. So eventually, it just gives way and falls. What falls is called scree. Now, this process occurs as the snow is packing into these corries. So the corries are filling up while the scree is being added. So now, when rotational slip occurs, and the glacier moves, the scree and rocks scrape along the surface, causing abrasion. So now it's no longer just ice on rocks, it's ice holding rocks dragging along the mountain face. And that creates these unique landforms. Here we can see something which is clearly some rocks being dragged along the cliff face. The agent is ice. Here is another example where we can see rocks being scraped through glaciers along the surface and we can see these unique landforms. As rotational slip occurs, these rocks can largely move with no major obstacles. But what about these rocks? These ones are pretty firmly in the mountain. So what happens to those rocks? In this close-up gif of somebody getting waxed, we can see how the sheet of wax paper is clinging firmly onto the hair and pulling it as it moves, plucking these hairs. Now, believe it or not, this is the same process that occurs in the mountain, with these particular rocks, the ones on the left, that are somewhat firmly held into the ground, they have deep roots into the mountain. As rotational slip occurs, they will be plucked from the mountain, hence the term plucking. Now these processes are the one behind all these U-shaped valleys we see between these mountains. That also means that the mountain peaks were formed through glacial erosion. So when you see a situation like this, we can see how as the erosion began to occur and the glacier started to move, it carved the two mountain peaks separate. And at some point they were almost equal to each other. Now these mountain peaks are called erates. Now, once the glacier moves beyond the quarry, it carves through the valley and forms what's known as a U-shaped valley. So imagine this entire valley full of ice and dragging along all those rocks, and that creates these unique landscapes. If the glacier is a bit weaker, they'll create what's known as a hanging valley. Now, these pictures are taken from the Lake District in the UK. When the ice age ended, the quarries filled with water, creating what's known as a tarn. So once the quarries are no longer full of ice and they're full of water, they go from being a glacier to being a tarn. Now, the scree that survived the trip from the mountain to the end of the valley are called erratic stones. 
And that is the first introduction lesson to glaciers. So do you feel confident describing the below terms? Do you know what a glacier is? Can you identify a quarry? What's rotational slip? What's the mechanism of freeze-thaw weathering? What is scree? What does abrasion look like? What's plucking? What causes a U-shaped valley? What causes a hanging valley? And what categorizes a tarn? If you know the answer to all of these, you've absorbed the lesson and well done. Please consider supporting the channel by clicking that subscribe button and liking and leaving a comment and I'll see you in the next lesson.